Hello, today I want to show you guys some of my favorite art books that I have with me at the moment. If you're anything like me, art books are like your biggest weakness. And oh boy, if I walk into a bookstore, it's it, it's game over. <laughs> there are too many to choose from, so I've divided it into three categories, uh, like the Oscars, <laughs> textbooks, visual books, and reference books. All right, let's get started. Okay, category number one, textbooks. Uh, these are educational books that sort of talk about the mechanical parts of drawing and painting and these are sort of like guides or tutorials and how-to books. So these are kinds of books that you want to study if you want to get better at drawing and painting. So the first book we have is Color and Light by James Gurney. And James Gurney is a very influential figure in well, the art community and he even has a a YouTube channel so I recommend you check it out but this book basically taught me how to paint uh, not just traditionally even though you know James Gurney is a traditional painter and the stuff he talks about um, is regarding traditional painting and using real paints like gouache specifically gouache a lot but a lot of these things are also applicable when it comes to digital painting just because you know it's just color and light and how to apply and think about these things in a very very logical way so there are a lot of guide books and how-to books like you know those how to draw manga character books and stuff like that that kind of just touch upon the surface I think it's a bit shallow just because like, it just teaches you how to do a specific thing or in their way and that's it but this book goes into the very very fundamentals of color and light so it's basically universally applicable to whatever it is you're painting whether it's portraits or environments or um, you know landscapes and across many many different styles just because it's very very like i said universal so this book is definitely the one book that i would recommend if you want to start getting into painting whether it's digitally or traditionally i think it's required reading when it comes to being an artist i think if you're just starting out you have to get this book and it will do you so much good All right, the second book I have here is How to Draw by Scott Robertson. And now Scott Robertson also is another influential figure in the world of art, especially when it comes to concept art. Um, he's been teaching at Art Center for uh, a very long time. And a lot of concept artists in the industry have come up under uh, Scott Robertson's tutelage. So I think he, and also he has a YouTube channel, so go check him out. But basically he, this book, taught me how to draw in perspective and you know I talk about drawing mechs and vehicles and spaceships a lot and well I mean it all sort of started out from here that ability to draw in perspective and hard surface subject matters like vehicles and buildings and stuff like that so I think that this book is also very much required when it comes to drawing and learning how to draw because I think it's essential that you learn how to draw in perspective. I think my personal opinion is that if you can't draw in perspective, uh, you can't draw at all. And even though I went to art school, I went to a school that was very heavily focused on graphic design. So I was never really taught the fundamentals of drawing in art school, um, specifically when it comes to perspective and projection and stuff like that. So I would say that this book really taught me everything I knew about art and drawing specifically because you know I just wasn't taught this stuff in school so I I say that I am an art school student and everything but I would consider myself a self-taught student just because um, these two books basically taught me almost everything I know about painting and drawing. So this book is also very technical kind of like the color and light one even more so just because this is like fundamental truth it's like math right you can't one plus one is two it's like undeniable and you can't um, refute the facts. This is basically all just information presented to you in a very technical way and it's up to you how you want to apply them and this book does teach you how to apply a lot of this stuff. It takes a lot of time to just work your way through this book. Like It is really a textbook and it kind of really is like a syllabus where you start from very very simple stuff like drawing a square in perspective and multiplying it into perspective into the distance all the way to you know doing very very complex perspective mapping and mapping of shadows and stuff like that you know so it takes a lot of time to just work your way through this book and practice and sometimes you know 
you, you forget stuff, it's like formulas about how to do stuff. So you have to revisit the book from time to time just to refresh yourself on how to do all these projections and perspective calculations. Okay, on to category number two, visual books. You know them, I know them, these are the kinds you buy just because they're really pretty and you want to spend all day looking at them. So book number one is The Electric State by Simon Stolenhag. I, I don't know if I'm mispronouncing his name, if I am, get over it. Um, so I'm a huge fan of Simon's work and I think all his books are really great. I have all his books and they're amazing and worth buying but I think if you had to choose one, then I would definitely choose The Electric State just because it's a very, very cohesive story and the narrative and art here is really, really good. Okay, so, so Simon Stolenhag as an artist has been very, very influential um, during my early days as an artist just because I had never seen anyone paint like this before, basically. I've just never seen someone explore digital painting in with this mood at the time you know now everyone's doing it uh, but at the time in the early days of digital painting and concept art like the cg hub concept art dot org days you know everyone's using top light with god rays and you know really really dramatic lighting but then i came across his work and it was just like a totally different thing i've just never seen anyone paint using this sort of mood and this sort of lighting before and you know there was a really really clear story behind these paintings and it was very very intriguing to me the amount of storytelling and narrative that he infuses into his work and also I mean, I mean these, are, these are clearly very very well rendered um, beautiful paintings and just like the aesthetic it's just something that I've never seen before, like, you know, these like early 80s, 90s sedans. So this is definitely one of my favorite art books of the past decade, easily. Okay, so the next book I have is Katsuya Terada's Ten. And it's a 10-year retrospective. And it's all in Japanese, so I don't really know what it says, but I'm assuming it's like a collection of his work throughout his ten years as an artist or something like that, right? And I've, I've marked it out here just because um, there's a lot of nudity in this book, and I can't really show it. <laughs> I'm gonna get demonetized, or this video is gonna get removed. So I'm just gonna show you the uh, pages that I've marked as safe. Oh no! Okay, so uh, yeah, um, Katsuya Terada is one of those people who is really influential in the way I draw. And if you look at his work online, you will see that there's a lot of similarities between his way of sketching and my way of sketching because I take very huge inspiration in the way he draws and the way um, he executes his line work. So it's very, very intricate and a lot of it are just sketches. There's some digital art in here as well. But um, what attracted me to this book was, and his style in general, is just his line work and his ink work that is just uh, absolutely beautiful. So there's a lot of different styles even though um, his um, sketching style is pretty much consistent but there are lots of different ways in which he varies um, his execution of the sketch so there's tones in some of them, some of them are digital of course. So it's very very interesting to see how he varies his style between the different mediums that he uses. So for example this looks to me like a pencil drawing and it looks vastly different from his ink drawings. I'm afraid that's all I can show you of this book without the danger of getting demonetized or flagged for inappropriate content because there is a lot of nudity in this book. Um, he, you know, that's just what he draws. But this book is really, really cool. And if you're not familiar with the artist, definitely recommend you checking him out because um, if you like my work, you will definitely love his stuff. Okay, and uh, last but not least are the reference books. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, these are reference materials. You get them 
if you need information on whatever subject you're interested in. So I got these books not because I was searching for them in particular, but because uh, they covered some really interesting subject matters that I think are really, really cool. Uh, you know, I found them in the store and was like, oh, oh, I didn't know I wanted you, but now I do. So the first book you've probably seen in a previous video, but it's called Made in North Korea, Graphics from Everyday Life in the DPRK. I'm pretty sad about this because I had a silverfish problem in one of my bookshelves and they just ate away at this cover just because this cover is really papery and I guess, I guess they really like it. So it's a bit damaged, but overall in pretty good shape. So this book is really cool. Again, it's one of those things that I ran into, I saw on the bookshelf and I was like, this is really really cool and I want it but basically it just covers like graphic design and you know graphic materials and illustrations and packaging that come from North Korea and it's very like communist 80s communist um, revolutionary style of uh, art right which is really really interesting to me and it's just something that I've never seen covered like how often are you gonna see candy wrappers from North Korea right so that's really really cool I think it's really awesome and I have used it in some pieces of my designs and I'm really excited to incorporating this into more of my designs in the future and you know lately I've just found myself not so much buying like the pretty art books but more reference books just cause it's like this is the kind of stuff that interests me more you know art books are cool but um, you know just they don't really actually help you in getting better art whereas this is like you know direct reference material and if you're studying it and you're uh, looking at it and analyzing it properly um, I feel like this stuff is just a lot more helpful and also a lot more interesting I think just because like you you're not gonna see this kind of stuff anywhere on the internet at least not readily available so just to have access to this sort of material and this sort of coverage at this resolution is really really um, cool and I think is a lot more satisfying to me to look at than art books nowadays you know when I was younger I would buy the art of books you know out of this video game out of that video game out of this movie out of the Ratatouille that's an amazing book by the way but nowadays I just find myself gravitating to reference books a bit more Okay, so here is the bonus book, a quote-unquote bonus book that you can get online for free. Now, just a little background on this book. So it is a graphic design standards manual by NASA. So what this is, is, uh, and the packaging is really freaking cool by the way. So what this is, let me just unwrap this before I talk, just cause it's Okay, so what this is, is, I'm just taking this away, is basically a style guide, like any other corporate style guide that you would find for uh, any business or corporate entity. For those of you who don't know what a brand guide is, it is basically a guide put out by a brand or a corporation for graphic designers on how to, you know, design collaterals and material for the brand. So for instance, what sort of fonts you can use and only use those fonts when it comes to designing um, posters for NASA, for instance, or what colors you use. So for example, so this is the NASA red, right? You can only use this red and not any other shade of red because this is the red that is associated with the NASA brand and the NASA logo. So it's just guides like that and you know how to use the logo for instance so what the sizings are um, like that how to use the logo so the do's and don'ts that are associated with the imagery of a particular brand so that's a brand guide uh, or a style guide and this one is NASA's style guide so here is an example of how NASA tells their graphic designers how to use their logos on the spaceship and spacecraft, for example. So 
this is a lot more interesting to me than just a regular brand guide you know on <laughs> look at this oh my goodness so to just talk about the usage of markings on the space shuttle right so that's really really cool um so again this is much more interesting to me than a regular corporate brand guide so for example like you know walmart has a brand guide um the lakers have a brand guide but it just goes into how to use the logos in uh, i would say boring ways like how to put it on a jersey you know if you had a truck you know where would you put it but this is like really really cool and very very esoteric and just stuff that you normally wouldn't see or just take into consideration when you know you're doing branding or you're designing a logo um so this <laughs> i'm just a nerd and all this stuff is really really cool to me um so what i mean when i say you can get this book for free well it's nasa and they put out a lot of their information and content for free on the internet for um, because they are a publicly funded agency so you can go online to the NASA website and download a free PDF of this. Um, there's a link down below to the website and you can just go and download this for free. It's free, um, but there, I didn't know this when I bought this book. So I paid about a hundred dollars or so to get this book just because I thought, oh my God, this is so cool. And I bought it immediately. Um, I went online to Google it and realized that there was a free PDF digital version that NASA just puts out on their website. But uh, at the end of the day, I think it's really cool just because the book is awesome. And you know, look at this packaging. It's so sick that I'm just a nerd and I like collecting stuff like this. So I think it was worth the buy at the end of the day. So that is it for the list of my favorite books for now. Um, you know, if you have any suggestions on books that you think I would like, or if you have any questions about these books, uh, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you like this video, like it. If you want to see more of this stuff, let me know. Uh, subscribe. You know what to do and all that kind of good stuff. All right. Have a nice day. <laughs> Goodbye.